crescendo of patriotic excitement at the Hua Mark Stadium, we join Jim Watt and Reg Gutteridge. So, yet another battle between Chitla Darwin and Bernal, old uh, rivals indeed. The Thailander won the championship against the Mexican and then they fought an obvious return and would you believe that went to a 12 rounds draw and the odds are that this could be another tie. So the Thailander then in the pale blue trunks and look for a bit of switch hitting coming in from the veteran Bernal, he's now 31, he's changed his stance occasionally. I've, I've seen a lot of him, I'm a great admirer of his, he lives now in Los Angeles with the roving uh, Jimmy Montoya stable. So the crowd now, really heavy betting, just a little trip there, <laughs> nothing to worry about. And uh, Chitladar knows all about the durability of Banal. And I would have thought the possible last fling now or the former champion from Mexico. And only one loss on the record of the Thailander now. And that was in only his fifth fight when he challenged for the then light flyweight championship, a division lower than this, against a Korean in 84. And he lost over 12 rounds. And of course, we know him in Britain as the man who defeated Charlie Magri in London. And he did that very convincingly indeed, with Magri pulled out of the fight at the end of the fourth. So these eight stoners then going to set a pretty fast pace and the referee Lou Filippo from California, he's got to be on his toes as well. Well having fought twice Jim, I suppose they needn't take stock of each other too long now. No, well the, the fact that both previous contests have been very close, uh, obviously neither of them want to take any chances, they know how good the other man is. And uh, I suppose it's just a case of doing what you did last time, but trying to do a little bit better. But uh, it's nice having seen uh, Chitla Dabi 4 over here when they box Magri, because although the, the, the fight didn't last too long, we found out quite a, bit, quite a bit about him. Very strong, very capable, with a good chin. Uh, Magri tested the chin a few times. So I would imagine we're in for another treat here. And in fact, uh, the champion was down last time he fought uh, Bernal in the first round and again in the seventh. Uh, but his powers of recovery are very strong. Of course, former kickboxer champion. And now his first pro fight was on uh, local currency, about 100 baht, 2 pounds and 70 p, I'll make that. And now he's into the 100,000 US dollars for this one, with only 30,000 for the Mexican. So he's well pleased with his first round there, Chitlada. So taking the judges scoring there, one of the judges from Britain, Roland Daking, and the other are both Americans, Messrs Delgado and Ford. So here's the run down then with Chitlada. As I say, only the one loss and one draw on the record but he's had so many kickboxing victories but they are not of course included in the official one and there's Gabriel Bernal then the veteran as I say he beat the legendary flyweight Miguel Canto in over 10 rounds and Canto earned a fortune at this weight so uh, it isn't always heavyweights who get the big money So into the second then, and there's the switching right away, as I said with Bernal, he tends to do that. Must be a difficult man to fight. And the crowd here, they don't mind wagering between rounds, during rounds, they signal to each other. It really is almost like a racetrack, the way they bet. I'll tell you what, Jim, the Mexican's come to fight all right, doesn't he? He realises probably this is his last shot. Yeah, obviously he also realises being in the, 
Chetler Daz territory. He's really going to have to win clearly, uh, if not by knockout. So uh, it's no use another tight verdict. I don't see him getting any favours here. He's really going to have to, to pull out all the stops and probably go for a stoppage. Well, of course, the uh, referee and judges, in this case only the judges, if it goes the distance, uh, should be neutral. And as I say, an Englishman and two Americans. So you never know. He might get the best of it if it got very close. But I doubt it. He's a good fighter, Chaladar. He really is. He's, he's so strong. Although both of them had trouble making the weight and had to make second attempts at uh, 6.30 in the morning. Well, we talk about partisan crowds, Jim, and I tell you, your lads in Glasgow did you a few turns, but, I mean, it really is tremendous here, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what I meant when I said uh, Bernal would have to win pretty clearly because it's no use seeing the, the local support don't affect the, the judges. They certainly do. You can't help but be affected... Uh, all of uh, Chetladar's good work, the referees are going to hear a scream. And when Bernal's good work, they're going to hear nothing at all. And it has to affect you, uh, especially in a close fight. Sometimes it looks as though the champion hits with sort of arm strength, but he hurts. So almost like little nuggets in those gloves. They're only six ounce gloves at flyweight. Mexican made. Notice that little bit of touch of the alley shuffle almost there with Chetladar there. But Bernal will keep pressing him. I mean, here's a man who had 49 fights. He knows his way around. And he won the WBC Championship in Tokyo against Kobayashi back in 84. So uh, he really knows what he's doing. And he won that on a knockout. He didn't rely on judges for that one, Bernal. to sprint back to the corner there and uh, I don't know whether that's helped him or not the second lifting him up like that I would have thought that would have stretched a few muscles now the replay get a look now how the champion knows how to stay out of trouble this is where the kickbox experience comes in they know how to slip punches and of course feet so the crowd have made up their mind now they're going to cheer their champion on in round three and Chitladar now made a better start than he did in the previous fight and if you think the atmosphere is electric here well you can imagine last time up and they had five deaths around the ringside three heart attacks and apparently one stabbing and one shooting Good hard scrap now, Jim, isn't it? It's really a classy championship. Yeah, you'll notice the referees, they had nothing to do so far. They're, they're never more than uh, six inches away from each other, but uh, punching all the time. Just telling them to keep their heads up there. He doesn't want them bumping and boring and spoiling a good fight. Well, I give uh, Benal his due there. He's tried to... Put some deaf ears going in there and trying to ignore the crowd. Takes a bit of doing, doesn't it? Some good names on his record, though. Juan Diaz, who also beat Magri. Manel defeated him. Every left hand that he prods out there. I say prods, he really stings with it. Uh, Chetladar, I tell you, but nope. Well out of trouble with that right hand. Way off the mark. crowd signaling every one of those leads now as if to say to the judges did you see that we did good elusive fighter Jim impresses me doesn't he you yeah he's never flustered there uh, but now he's had him under constant pressure all the way through he's been boxing on the retreat he's landing more punches but uh, he copes with the pressure excellently never flustered always says he's what's about him good concentration a good little fighter
Mind you, the old challenger there, a 12-year pro. He's going to keep going. It'll take a bit of stopping. Well, you'd call that the English old-fashioned straight left, if you'll forgive the expression, Jim, wouldn't you? He's really got it perfect. Yeah, it's as good a jab as I've seen for a long time, and he seems to be off balance a lot of the times he's throwing the, the, the jab, but he's landing a bang on target. He's forever on the move, but uh, his punches are still still have that sharpness. Mind you, some of that English style, I would have thought, comes from the Liverpool trainer, Charlie Atkinson. So we'll take a break and we'll be back with more action. Of this uh, World Boxing Council Flyweight Championship with uh, Soch Ladar in the power blue trunks now, really boxing beautifully against the very willing challenger, Gabriel Bonal. managed to draw last time and one of those judges in that fight was Harry Gibbs from London he he voted for the Thailander American referee doing a good job here it's an easy fight for him to handle really Jim but uh, he's doing it well isn't he yeah, well, he's keeping himself well out of the way, which is not easy when you're dealing with flyweights who move at this pace. But uh, it's been an easy fight to handle, as you say. N never really clinching, although he's not really giving them a chance to clinch. As soon as they get up close, if they don't throw punches, he's breaking them up quickly. He's handling it well. Oh, he just let him off the hook a bit there, but now some of the fighters would have taken a bit of advantage of that as he fell into the ropes. You notice they're tied together there. That's to try to stop the fighters from falling out the ring it's uh, more of a medical safety precaution and the four rope strands now that's been introduced by both WBC and WBA well I tell you those British flyweights on their best nights would have had a tough job with this fellow, although I wouldn't mind seeing your man Walter McGowan against him at one time, Jim. Yeah, well, uh, Walter didn't hang around the way, Bernal's hanging around. He, he's coming straight in all the way through. He's not really doing anything clever. We expect a, a little bit more uh, cleverness from Bernal, but he's coming straight in and he's taken far too many shots. Well, I can understand the Mexican trying to go in and uh, make the punches pay. He went to France and knocked out Antoine Montero. In fact, broke his jaw in the 11th round. And Montero is the, the Frenchman who defeated Keith Wallace. What a good defence he's got there, though, Chuck Ladar. He slips out of the corner as well. Uh, Sot apparently translates meaning fresh and uh, certainly he is and Chitladar is the name of the first gymnasium that he appeared in so he's actually boxing under an assumed name so he can still afford the run back to the corner almost there and now let's have a look at replay now just watch this defence by Chitladar there the left hand comes in now, the accuracy. Always managing to keep the challenger just at bay, but being able to reach him. There it goes again, that left hand through the guard. Coming out for round six then. Halfway stage in this World Flyweight Championship. And the Mexican carrying the fight to the champion, but finding it tough going. Well, I don't know whether they speak well enough. I'm, I'm sure the Mexican understands what hold it means. He's, he really should say stop this uh, American referee, Jim. They always assume they know all the language. I think uh, Bernal could be doing with a little bit of success to, to break his cause up a little bit. He, 
exerting pressure all the way through, but he can't seem to pin Chitlada down. When he gets him against the ropes, uh, Chitlada can pull himself out of trouble and come back with his own punches. It's really a good performance from the champion so far. Beautiful the way he switches the punches as well with the right hand there, that uppercut coming in. He really is an accurate puncher. It's incredible, really, that we can only trace 13 actual under the boxing rules uh, fights now for Chetladar. Extraordinary reach too, Jim, isn't he, the champion? Well, I'm surprised that he is still boxing at flyweight because watching him against Magri, he was very young looking, but uh, big boned. I thought he'd have gone on to bantamweight in, in the, the very near future. But uh, he's struggling, but he's still doing flyweight, but I'm surprised. Well, maybe that's because the Thailander Payarakarun who fights at Super Bantamweight, actually had four kickbox victories over Chitalada. Or Chitladar, I tell you, it's getting a difficult name. I wish you'd have chosen a different gymnasium to invent this name. I mean, it could have been Tommy or Beckett or Royal Oak, would have been a lot easier. This fight would have been excited without the crowd, actually, but uh, with this crowd the whole time cheering on every punch for their man in particular. Although somebody must have taken some odds to have the betting going the way it is. So it is nor was the heavyweights, Jim, that give you the great action. There's a lot of class about this work, isn't there? Yeah, I think it's quite the opposite, actually. I think the lighter weights have always produced far better boxing and more skill. And this one certainly is a cracker. He was looking, always looking pleased with himself, isn't he, there? And there's just catching the, the fair hair there of Charlie Atkinson from Liverpool getting in the ring and then the replay there. And now just swinging a punch and catching the champion's shoulder, but he's about to duck and dive and just takes a glancing punch or two there. There it is, look. See how close they get in and could still miss punches. But he didn't miss the head there. It was almost a, a snooker job there. Round eight, a little bit late coming out for work there, Gabriel Bernal. I think he's probably running out of ambition. No knockdown so far. And uh, 130,000 American dollars there. They're cutting up here with 100,000 to the champion. So I tell you, there's some money at the small weights in the fight game if you're good enough. Now he's switched to Southport, Jim. That's confusing both of us now. We've got to fight in a mirror. They're the wrong way round at times. Well, uh, I think Chetlada has uh, decided to change his tactics completely. I expected him to be a bit more aggressive in, in this contest, but no, he's brought his back foot all the way through, but still controlling things. He's never taken too many. He's always proving to be a little bit sharper than Bernal, and things are working for him, so I imagine he'll be wanting to do this right to the end of the fight. So beautifully accurate, the champion. That's what it's about in this game, making the punches count, planting them properly. This is what the old chroniclers might have called milling on the retreat so beautifully. There you go with the southpaw stance again. I tell you, if you're, if you're looking after the man in the other corner against him, Jim, you'd say he was a bit of a nuisance, as Chitla do, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, you don't know what to tell a fighter against Chitla da because he can do so many different things. Uh, most fighters have trouble boxing on the retreat, but uh, he's a past master at it. He's quite enjoying himself. He's allowing Bernal to make the first move all the time, making them miss and then come back with lovely counters. So it's non-stop with about a minute to go in this round. Look at those 
was doubling up with the left hook there. It really swings in effect, but they really count now. So the the champion's really feeling his way in now. It's late enough into the fight that he's taken over completely. A brave show indeed by Bernal. How do you think the way this man fights? He was an altar boy who studied Latin for intended priesthood and then finished up getting a living in the ring. He really is adored in Mexico. smack of heads there but not, not too much of that going on but uh, Chitlada has proved in every department that he uh, has what it takes see, see the way he doubles on the, the left hook here and again and again see wherever his feet are he manages to get power into the punches Chitlada this is another thing that makes him so awkward southpaw orthodox the whole thing into round 10 and an absolute stunning performance by Chitlada now no question but Bernal, considering they're supposed to be both a bit weight weakened and had to work off weight in the early morning weigh-in, about a pound over they were considered. It just has tremendous stamina. And I think it makes the, the rest of the world's flyweights know what they're up against. And the highest rated in Britain in the WBC is Duke McKenzie from London, who's now number six. Mackenzie's a good puncher, but uh, comparatively inexperienced in world terms compared, well, certainly with Bernal, with 49 fights. So there you see planted in the middle of those photographers in the white shirt. That's Roland Daking from uh, Reading. Uh, judging oh, a rare chance where the challenger catches the champion and makes him back off so now Jim is going to test that durability again well uh, even when he takes one on the chin he managed to do that without a problem he has a good chin uh, as we saw when he was over here and uh, things are going his way, he's on a high at the moment, he must be delighted with his performance so far. So uh, when you feel like that, you tend to take punches better too than you do when things are going wrong. Well, we certainly can't call uh, the Thailand champion now a hometowner because he even fought in Kuwait the first time they've had a world championship in that part of the world against Freddy Castillo, another Mexican who was the ex-light flyweight champion of the world. Great duck and dive stuff now. Oof. And Sutt, the nickname Fresh, is still looking a bit fresh, isn't he? But I'll say this for Bernal, he's, he's really fighting his heart out now. If the corner man had managed to steam Bernal up to come on strong, is certainly the champion is not short of good advice there. With uh, Charlie Atkinson from Liverpool, there has really taken to this Thailand uh, training, and I think the champion owes a great deal to him by the look of it. Round 11, and no doubt that the champion, well in front. But little Bernal will not be denied, will he? Keeps steaming on, hoping for the best. Uh, remember, as I said, he, he had the champion down twice in their previous fight, but he hasn't managed it here. He really is trying to turn this into a bit of an exhibition match now, Jim. Yeah, well, Bernal has been forcing the pace all the way through, trying to keep Chetlada under pressure, but he's never been able to match him for variety or uh, sharpness, he, he just lacks that little bit of sharpness there for he's taking too many punches as he comes into Chitlada and not landing his own punches cleanly enough. So Chitlada has always had the edge, 
and uh, he really looks as though he's enjoyed himself tonight. Uh, he's put on a tremendous display. It really is brilliant boxing. It's uh, such a relief from a lot of the hit and hope stuff that Jim Watt and I have to see around the world these days. So back to the switch hitting again now by Manal. Comes from one of the shrewdest camps originally, 80-year-old Arturo Hernandez. He also managed Lupe Pintor, looked after Benal, but uh, sent his son on this trip with him. Well, the judges are not going to have too much trouble sorting this one out. I love the way he shoots that little uppercut inside, Jim. Yeah, well, he has a, a tremendous variety of movement and a variety of punches. Benal has been doing virtually the same things all the way through. Chilada has solved them out, and uh, for that reason, they're under any pressure. There's about a minute to go in this round, then. And it's 24, Chilada, but you feel like saying, just imagine what he's going to be when he's had more actual boxing with gloves experience, Jim. I mean, he fights like a veteran now. He does, yeah. You wonder maybe if he'll actually be burned out before he reaches his peak, maybe a little bit fed up. Uh, when you think of 13-odd contests, and it's not bad, is it? Well, he's giving him a little bit of uh, showboating now to keep the, the home crowd and the home crowd betting people happy. Whoops, he almost ran into one there. Likes the applause at the end of every round. I'm not mad about that being lifted onto the stool, Jim. I don't think you'd have fancied that too much, would you? No, I don't see the point. I, I don't see the reason for that. Yeah, he's liable to crush a rib the way he's grabbing hold of him. So into the 12th and final round then of this World Flyweight Championship. As the American referee just makes sure they realise three minutes to go. And it's been a hard fought and a clean fight without knockdowns, but practically every other thrill to go with it. Good boxing, solid punching, and great heart. What a frustrating man to fight, Jim. He can tag you a bit, hurt you, then slip away. Yeah, I think uh, Bernal's heart must be just a bit broken trying to land some big punches. I mean, he's lucky if he's, if he's landed half a dozen full-blooded shots on uh, Chetladar's chin. Always on the move, always coming back with something. Uh, I just don't know what Bernal can do with him. Well, as an ex-champion, Bernal, that's the way to go out fighting, isn't it? That, I always admire that, Jim, the fellow really giving it his best shot. Yeah, well, this is the third time they've met. As you said, they know each other, but I think after, uh, after this performance, I don't think Bernal can complain to who's the better man. No, he'd probably want to get him stuffed and put over his mantelpiece now, Chip the door. What a good finish. They, they staying in there the whole time, punch for punch. And I tell you, the little challenges earned his $30,000 the hard way, but uh, with his tough background, that still remains a lot of money. And uh, if he got lucky to win the title, well, that could treble overnight. But of course, there's no way he could possibly get this decision. So the chanting of the crowd now to see this championship out into the...